Hello everybody! Welcome to a very special live uh, live stream. I am uh, talking about the Intellivision Homebrew Awards today and I'm going to cast my votes. Um, the Intellivision Homebrew Awards Hello, were announced uh, yesterday, I believe, um, on Papa Pete's channel. They are now live in the Atari Age forums. Um, Papa Pete has had this gig of kind of hosting the awards and being the mouthpiece for the awards for a few years now. Uh, something he does really, really well, and honestly, he is the perfect channel uh, for which to do that. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Papa Pete's channel is not a place that you go for, you know, critical, let's talk about how a game sucks or talk about how a game's great. He's more of a community channel. He'll talk about um, anything and everything. Uh, and as such, he gets access to a lot of stuff that people like me probably wouldn't get access to. Uh, for instance, uh, there is no way on God's green earth that Dino would ever send me a free copy of Ghostbusters. <laughs> Um, because he knows I'd probably tear it to shreds, uh, based on the gameplay footage that I've seen. Um, and that's also why a channel like mine, uh, would never be good at hosting an awards show like this, is because I'm not, that's not my role. My role, I'm the Siskel and Ebert of the homebrew community. At least, I try to be. Um, so with that said, we're going to be... Uh, looking through the uh, Intellivision Homebrew Awards, I'm going to be casting my vote. I'm going to talk about what I think about each category and the games in them. Um, and maybe how they reflect on the current issues that the Intellivision Homebrew community is having. Uh, Brian's Man Cave posted, I think a week ago, a video on uh, like asking, is there an Intellivision Homebrew crisis right now? And it's something that I have been thinking about for quite a while. Publishers are struggling to sell copies. Um, a perfect response to that is the recent uh, Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition uh, scenario where they're like, okay, we're gonna put this up for sale as cart only, and if we don't get a hundred sales before, well the deadline was yesterday at midnight, if we don't get a hundred sales in time, that's all it's ever gonna be. We're not gonna put it in a box. We're not gonna distribute the ROM. Uh, just what's out there is out there. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, I obviously don't like that way of selling games, but I totally understand that in the current way the community is, um, it's kind of a necessary evil uh, if you don't want to risk losing literally thousands of dollars publishing a game and then only have 50 people buy it. So... As we go through this, I'm certain, I am absolutely certain that some of my opinions are not going to be particularly popular, at least with some people. Um, but, please understand, I'm not a gatekeeper. You may disagree with me and that's totally fine and you can voice that and I will never delete a comment that disagrees with me. Uh, the only comments I'd ever delete are ones that are vulgar. Um, Everybody is welcome on this channel. Every opinion is welcome on this channel. And I'm just a guy. So if you disagree with me, it's not like I'm the gatekeeper of Intellivision Homebrew. Um, I'm expressing my opinion. I'm expressing my thoughts on why maybe um, things are the way they are. Um, and my thoughts on the categories and my thoughts on the games in them. So without further ado, let's take a look at the 2023 Intellivision Homebrew Awards. Before I get started, why don't I say hello hello to some people. Hey Jay, hey Operation Shutdown, Pierre, Intellivision Gamers here, Savator, Big Doomer, Cannabis Kid, Benvril, Anders Carlson, Ivory Tower Collections. We've got a ton of people in here. I appreciate it very much. Thank you for spending some time with me. Um, so to vote in the Atari, uh, in the Intellivision Homebrew Awards, you have to go to Atari Age. You go to the Intellivision section of the forums, 
and you go to the Intellivision, Intellivision Homebrew Awards section there and then each of the categories is separated and you can go in there and vote. You do have to be a member. Uh, hey Brian, how's it going? I just mentioned your video uh, in the intro here. What I'll probably do after I'm done, maybe tonight, I'll link a, um, I'll post a link to your video on the Intellivi potential Intellivision homebrew crisis. Um, so, we're going to go through each category, just kind of in order and how they are here. There's no particular order, it's just whoever last commented, that'll be on top. So, the first category is the 2023 Best Port or Conversion. Now, let me just check here and make sure that... Oh, yeah, that's all showing up on the screen. So, Best Port or Conversion. We have five games here. Um, you're working on a homebrew now that you're while watching this? Well, that's good. Maybe, maybe some of the opinions that I express here will influence how you do that homebrew. Uh, best port of conversion. So this is a category that uh, it's just games from other systems ported over to the Intellivision. Uh, we've got Super Mario Brothers, which was a secret uh, Portland release, which was then kind of released under another name on a site that I'm not going to mention because it is supposed to be anonymous and we respect people who want to be anonymous but it is a very good port of Super Mario Brothers on the Intellivision. My view of ports um, I'd really like if the homebrew community moved a little more away from ports. Now Mario Brothers, Dragon Quest um, that's a little different. You're porting something from a later system onto the Intellivision, in this case both of them NES. So if you're port porting Master System games, Intellivision, uh, NES games, Super Nintendo games, Genesis games down to the Intellivision, that's impressive, that's something really neat. When we get down to the Yars Revenge, even though Homebrew Inc. did add some stuff to that um, and made it more than the Atari version, it's still you're porting an Atari 2600 game to the Intellivision. Um, it doesn't excite me very much. I know a lot of people in particular were asking for Yars Revenge, so I mean it is what it is. But when you're porting something from an inferior system to the Intellivision, personally I don't really see the point unless you're gonna add stuff to it. So for instance 2022's uh, release of Robot Army um, was a port of Berserk, and you could play just the regular Berserk, but it also had the story mode with the boss and the different way from going uh, through all the uh, the maze. So that's the type of thing that I want to see. If you, like if I'm reviewing a game that is just a direct port of an Atari game, it may be good, it gets a pass, it does what it says it's going to do, but those games are never going to rank highly for me. Um, Brian says making ports is great while learning how to code but eventually we need more new games I totally agree um, in my view of like okay if you're gonna port an Atari 2600 game by all means do it it doesn't need a cartridge release release it as a ROM sell the ROM there's lots of people clamoring trust me when I did my Intellivision homebrew community guide um, there's a lot of people that just want the ROMs so of these I have played all of them except for Pitfall 3. Uh, I've seen gameplay footage of Pitfall, uh, Pitfall 3. Uh, for those of you who want to see gameplay footage of all the games mentioned here, obviously I have some of them on my channel, but not all of them. But uh, if we go back to the Intellivision Homebrew Awards section here, there is a link down here to uh, Papa Pete's video where he looks at all the games that were released in 2023. So you can do that. And Papa Pete's a great channel, lots of information. Absolutely go check him out. Uh, but for me, Super Mario Brothers was very good. Um, but, and Caverns of Mars was great, but they didn't add much to it. Uh, Caverns of Mars, obviously an Atari 8-bit game that they ported over, which is better than porting a 2600 game. 
um, but there wasn't much added to it. Um, Pitfall 3, this may be sacrilege, I've never been a big Pitfall fan. I apologize to all you Atari Activision diehards out there. Um, Yars Revenge I liked, I liked the added stuff that they put. But the game that stands out that just was so impressive and did just everything right, sounded right, looked right, was Dragon Quest. And Dragon Quest is absolutely going to be my vote for best port or conversion. Uh, in Television Collector release, absolutely fantastic. I got to play it in Portland, and I purchased a copy, and I absolutely love it. So for best port or conversion, I am saying Dragon Quest. Best artwork, packaging, and extras. So this is this is an interesting category. Um, because it has nothing to do with the game. And all of these have done a really good job. So I'm going to go from bottom to top because top's probably the one we're going to talk about the most. Amigo Cornhole. So that was released in limited quantities in Portland. I think a few more were put for sale after. That's a uh, 511 Under production. That's uh, Harvey Decline's uh, company. Fun game. He did a really cool kind of Parker Brothers box, and he handmade each box, and they're super impressive. They look great, um, so that's a, that's definitely a solid entry. It's more than just your standard flip-top box. Tron Anthology. Uh, Tron Anthology was released by uh, Intellivision Revolution, uh, and... I think why it's here is because it included, so Tron Anthology is a compilation of a whole bunch of Tron games, and they included overlays for all of them. Uh, I believe there was also a poster or art card in there. Um, flip top box, so the packaging itself wasn't anything special, but it was what's inside the box. Lock and Chase 8K. So the game itself, <laughs> it's just Lock and Chase. Um, <coughs> And, yes, it has a little animation of the guy's hat coming down. It looks a little better, but it is just Lock and Chase. It's an 8K version of Lock and Chase as opposed to the original, I believe, 6K version. But I will say both Lock and Chase and Dragon Quest, what in Television Collector started doing, was on the inside of the gatefold box printing artwork. And of the two of them, they're both great, but of the two of them, I actually really prefer the lock and chase one because he's got like the play field on the inside there so that one they're they're both very strong contenders but obviously uh ghostbusters deluxe um the only video i know that's out there of somebody actually showing you all the packaging and and the 3d printed cartridge uh is papa pete's uh he was sent a copy to review and I've got a lot of issues with Inti Home. We disagree on almost everything. But the one thing that you cannot say anything bad about Inti Home about is his packaging. Um, if he spent half the effort that he does on the packaging on his games, he would have an excellent product. And the only thing I will say is he has cardstock overlays, at least in the James Bond that I got. Um, so I was, I'm disappointed in that, but Ghostbusters Deluxe, you cannot deny that 3D printed no ghost cartridge with the LED that lights up, uh, the big box with a patch on the side, it is phenomenal packaging, so despite our differences, congratulations NT Home, you've got my vote for best artwork, packaging, and extras. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, Ivory Tower. Uh, I was at Portland last year, but I'm going to have to miss it this year because they moved it to September, and it is my son's birthday that weekend, and I would be an absolutely terrible uh, father if I <laughs> missed my son's birthday to go to a video game thing. <laughs> and I was going to go to Korg's, but then that's on my wife's birthday. <laughs> So, uh, next, not this weekend, but next weekend, 
uh, I'm going to the Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee. So if any of you guys are going to be there, absolutely send me a note, make a comment or something, and I will, I'll meet up and say hi. So the next category is Best Hack. So again, uh, this is not a category that particularly excites me. Um, especially considering that a lot of these, like, well, actually all of these, none of these are from bigger and better systems. Um, but that's, I mean, because they're hacks. So you take an original game, you alter the code to change sprites or to change level layout or something like that, um, and you call it a new game. And it is because it's got different stuff in it, but it's not, it's not an exciting one. And again, I think this is a category that honestly kind of waters down what's in the homebrew community right now. Uh, we've got Melody Blaster 2, which I do not have. Um, actually, this one has all, all the Intellivision Relute, well, all but one of the Intellivision Revolution um, uh, releases in this category I didn't pick up because they just did nothing for me. So Striker Super Pro Bowling, uh, Rock'em Sock'em SP Boxing, Melody Blaster 2. Um, if I had a keyboard, I would have picked up that because there really isn't a lot to do with your, your synthesizer. But these two, they do nothing for me. Um, I can appreciate people, like I know, uh, Casey, the Intellivision Gamer, and, uh, Papa Pete, and a few other guys, I think, uh, Super, Super Mega Graphics 64, they all participate in the bowling league, and that's great, you know, I have zero problem with them, they just don't personally excite me, and I do not make enough money to be able to buy all of them, and, uh, Cannabis Kid says I'd be a great dad, if I took my son to a gaming convention, and yes, and I have taken him to stuff, and we do lots of gaming stuff. Um, hey, Harvey, we're just talking about your box in one of the other categories. <laughs> um, but uh, paying for my son to fly out with me to Portland, I mean, I just simply can't afford that. Um, my oldest son is graduating high school uh, and uh, this year. And I have promised him as a graduation present, uh, he and I, because he's a big history guy and I'm a big history guy, we're going to France, we're going to Normandy Beach, we're going to a whole pile of World War I battlefields, we'll probably drive up in, into uh, the Netherlands there and go to Waterloo. So that, that's where that's money, that money's going this year, and I've already told my younger son that since I'm doing this with, uh, with James, I'm going to do it with him as well when he graduates in three years so he can start thinking where he wants to go. Um, but of the two that I have, um, Lock and Chase Revenge of Lupin adds new levels. Um, I like Lock and Chase. I really suck at all these kind of maze games. Um... So, that, I mean, and that's a big part of why I haven't done the review on that yet. I got costumes to do that review. When I do that review, it will probably be my favorite intro of all time. Like, I'm going to be the Keystone Cop in the black and white film chasing myself as the bad guy robber in that kind of sped up silent film thing. It's going to be an epic, epic review when I do it. Um, but I think I have to give this one to Tron Anthology. And the reason I have to give it to Tron Anthology is because it is a really nice collection of a lot of games. They add all those overlays. Um, it's a one-stop shop for all Tron, and I love the Tron games. Tron Deadly Discs is arguably my favorite original Intellivision game. I know that's kind of basic bitch of me. It's a really simple game, but I just really, really like it, and I'm good at it. Um... Hey, Mr. Baseman. So, for best hack, I'm going to vote for Tron Anthology, which is a Intellivision Revolution release. So, congratulations for them. Yes, we need that Lock and Chase review. I need to get better at Lock and Chase. 
Operation Shutdown, you're pretty good at those kind of games. You have an Intellivision, I'll mail, mail you that. You can record footage for me and then I'll make the review. <laughs> yeah, the improvements in Tron Anthology were really good. Best action game. Now, we're going to start to get into categories where, by virtue of my opinion of what it should be, there's really only one candidate. Um, ports are great, but if you're saying 2023 best action game, Super Mario Brothers isn't it. I love Super Mario Brothers, but it's like a 1980s, 1985 game, 1986 maybe. Sorry, I'm end of the work day, my brain's fried, but like that's that's not a 2023 game. That's like Nintendo releasing a Switch cart that just has Super Mario Brothers on it and say, "Hey, this should be the best platformer of 2023." No. Um great game, great port, excellent. But in a category of best action game, ports like Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall, Caverns of Mars, and X-Rally Unless you've done something really different with them, for me, the only game here that I feel comfortable voting is also an excellent game in its own right. I think, I don't think it would win. I think if I was just to pick what is my favorite game of these and not have that kind of moral view of what the category should be, honestly, I'd probably pick either Super Mario Brothers or Caverns, or Caverns of Mars. Um, but as the only in original game in this category, um, so, and therefore the only actual 2023 new release action game, Thunder Soldier gets my vote. And that's a game that was released by Homebrew Inc. And, uh, was programmed by Oscar Toledo Gutierrez. Best original game. This makes me a little sad. And I'll tell you why. Not because any of these... Well, one of them is. But not because these are bad games. Um, but because... Look at... So, the fact that we've got Mr. Turtle here. Which is objectively a terrible game. Um, there's a good game hiding in there. But complete lack of quality assurance. Um, like, the overlays had the jump and the throw button mixed up. Um, the menu, you have to press numbers. It's not a press disc to even get to the menu. You're sitting there. I was sitting there pressing the side buttons on all this. You have to press 1 to actually get to the menu to choose your level. And then when you get into the game, it controls terribly. You can see my review. Um, it, it controls are super sluggish. Uh, you get stuck on things all the time. Uh, when you leave the left side and and on the right side there was a uh, a monster coming after you. When you appear on the next screen, that monster's right on top of you because it just appears in the same spot it was in the last screen. Um, lazy or lack of knowledge. Um, Hey, Big Doomer, yeah, I am going to be talking about that later, especially when we get to Game of the Year. Um, but Mr. Turtle was just an absolutely terrible game, and I don't know if they made this list as they had to have a minimum of five, but there's no way that should even be here. If that gets a single vote, it's a simp for col uh, Collector Vision, uh, at least in my opinion. Like I said, there's a good game hiding in there, but it needed so much more playtesting and better programming. Um, I was super disappointed with Mr. Turtle. Amigo Cornhole. Uh, good game. Very simple game. I loved, loved the concept. I still chuckle when I look at it. He made the box look just like the Amico games. Um, and the, it's actually a really good cornhole game. Uh, it's not one that I go back to uh, all the time. X-Rally is actually very good. I did a review on it. Um, the only criticism I have of it is that the scrolling isn't very smooth. It kind of 
jitters a bit. Um, but go check out my my review and my gameplay footage of it. And if that doesn't bother you, uh, it's still available at the Intellivision Collector website. Uh, they released it. Um, if it does bother you and you want an X Rally style game, Cat Attack from Electronite. Uh, it doesn't have the radar, and it has different theming, but it has better scrolling in it. So, I kind of go back on for back and forth on which I prefer, but uh, you could check out both of those reviews and uh, decide if you want to pick one of those up. So, Amigo Cornhole is actually a really good cornhole game. It's not a game I go back to all the time, but uh, definitely a good time waster. Uh, with the packaging that Harvey made, he easily could have just really phoned it in, but he actually made a pretty good corn cornhole game. Um, but again, the fact that best original game, Cornhole's on there, and Mr. Turtle's on there, and as we're going to get to, Mr. Chess, which is an excellent chess game, but it's just a chess game, um, shows me that there really wasn't much in 2023 that was original. Uh, this category last year was teeming with awesome stuff and I'm gonna especially when we get to game of the year I'm gonna go back and and show you how different it was just a year ago um, Pumpkin Trilogy Again, uh, that is a compilation cart of three games that uh, Oscar Toledo Gutierrez made um, It's a homebrew ink release. Sorry uh, collector vision for mr. Turtle uh, 511 under for Amigo Cornhole, and the last three are all homebrew ink. Um, Pumpkin Trilogy, they're fun games, but they're simple games. There's three of them on there. Um, yeah, it's certainly not a bad game. Again, last year, I don't think any of these would have been on the list, uh, except for maybe Thunder Soldier. Thunder Soldier, for those who don't know, uh, I do have it. I will do a review eventually. Um, it's kind of a Contra style game. Uh, you run left to right, it's a shooter, there's bad guys all over, and then there's bosses. It's difficult, um, but it is an original game, and I think it is probably the most impressive of these. Uh, Mr. Chess is impressive in the way that, like, the AI is really good, and the AI is a lot faster than it is on other games. It's still not quick when you get to the higher level stuff, um, but Oscar knows his chess and he knows how to program his chess. If you're a big chess fan, you will love it. They added graphics and a little tournament mode, uh, but my vote is going to go to Thunder Soldier from Homebrew Inc. for best original game. Um, I will mention too that Oscar programmed all three of these uh, three of the five in this category, so that's impressive. Next, best graphics. Okay, so this is another one where, so, and they specify here, refers to all visual aspects of a nominee, the background graphics, the use of colors, sprites, animations. So, Here's a situation where I'm thinking, like, is it fair for something like Thunder Soldier, where they made their own sprites, they created them from scratch, it's all from their creative, uh, their, their mind, versus something like Super, Mar Super Mario Brothers, where they're just replicating something that other people already made. Now, in the case here, again, with Super Mario Brothers and Dragon Quest, we're porting down, so we're taking something from our advanced system, uh, very very similar to uh, Intellivania from uh, previous ones. Hey Phil, thanks for stopping in. All right, take care, Big Doomer. Um, you know, much like Intellivania, you're taking something from a more advanced system and trying to make it work uh, on the Intellivision. So that you know, there's an added level there. Uh, Stop the Express, that was an MSX game, which is post in television. Um, it looks good. Thunder Soldier looks good. Pitfall 3 looks good, but again... Um, again, I have to go, even though morally... So, 
if I was going to stick to that moral of, you know, no ports because they didn't create the sprites, I would have to say Thunder Soldier. I didn't think the graphics in Thunder Soldier were the best. Uh, I think they could have been a lot better. Um, they did what it needed to do. They looked good. Uh, I do think it belongs in this category. But the one that really impressed me probably more than anything else, um, again, was Dragon Quest. Um, it genuinely, when I sat down and played it in Portland, uh, Luke asked me, so Dragon Quest, Intellivision Collector release, um, Luke asked me, he's like, do you know Dragon Quest on the NES? And I was like, yes, of course, I love Dragon Quest. And he's like, would you mind playing this and tell me, telling me what you think? And I played it, and I was like, this is, this looks like the NES version. This sounds like, yeah, if I close my eyes and you told me that an NES player was playing Dragon Quest, I'd believe you. So because of how impressive it was and because it's ported down, <clears throat> I am going to vote for a port uh, in this category. Um, so congratulations, Intelligent Collector. Dragon Quest is a banger. If you have any any love of old RPGs and the Intellivision, you have to get Dragon Quest. It's a requirement. Best sound and music. So here we have Super Mario Brothers, Dragon Quest, Pitfall, Pitfall 3, Caverns of Mars, and Pumpkin Trilogy. Again, when you come here and you start talking about, okay, what well, has this best sound effects, jingles, and music, is it fair? Like, easily, easily, the best music here is Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest has a banger soundtrack, um, but they didn't write it. They ported it. I think when it comes to the music, that's maybe a little more for me um, a deal breaker like Super Mario Brothers you know iconic music it is not 2023 music um, which means that the only original game here which does have good music uh, simple sound effects but really good music is Pumpkin Trilogy uh, from Homebrew Inc and so for best use of sound effects, jingles, and music, it says either original or not, but I have to vote with my conscience, and maybe this uh, um, will rub some people the wrong way, but I've got my vote, and I'm voting for Pumpkin Trilogy. Now, game of the year. We've got a lot of options here. Uh, we have Dragon Quest, we have Super Mario Brothers, Pitfall 3, Caverns of Mars, Thunder Soldier, Yars Revenge, uh, Xor or Zor, X Rally, Stop the Express, and Tr Tron Anthology. Does it bother anybody else that the only candidate in Game of the Year that is original is Thunder Soldier? That seems wrong to me. Um, let's look at the archives. 2022 Homebrew Awards for Game of the Year. You have Beachhead. Beachhead's a port. You have Infiltrator. Now Infiltrator is like Metal Gear Solid on the Intellivision. It's a fantastic game. I have it. I need to record. That's going to be another banger intro when I get to it. Um, but the game itself is original. It's not a copy of Metal Gear. It just takes that gameplay style. Operation Cloudfire is a Metroidvania game. Awesome game. Star Mercenary. Plays kind of like Bosconian, um, or Dreadnought Factor, but excellent game. An original game. The Pandora Incident. My, probably my favorite homebrew. Period. Uh, Castle of Death. Uh, now, the show must go on. Was a it is a port of a game, 
but it is heavily modified. But last year, like one, two, three, four, five, and I'd argue even six, six of the candidates from last year are all, so sixth place of last year, for me personally, beats everything on this list for game of the year. Again, Dragon Quest is a fantastic port. I love Dragon Quest, and I've played far more Dragon Quest than I care to admit. Uh, Michael Hayes actually cracked the password system. I will be making a video on that at some point. Super Mario Brothers, very impressive port. Pitfall 3, I'm not a big Pitfall fan, but it looks great. Caverns of Mars was, Mars was good. Thunder Soldier is a great game. Yars Revenge, I like. Exor, I like. X Rally, Stop the Express, Drawn Anthology. I like all of these, but none of them would place in the top six of last year's. So it kind of leaves me thinking like how Brian's Man Cave was talking about how publishers are failing to sell uh, lots, uh, the quantity that they used to. And like last year, I actually wrote this down. Last year, there were, according to the stupidest list, 26 homebrew games released for the Intellivision. Uh, sorry, 2022, there was 26 games released. In 2023, there was 33. You would think that there would be more original. You would think that there would be more quality. And maybe 2022 was an outlier. Maybe 2022 was just a really awesome year. I know that a lot of those games were released. They were supposed to be released in prior years, but COVID caused production issues and all that. So they came out later. And so you had kind of this big wave that came after COVID. Um, but they're all, they're all ports. Rags to Riches. I haven't played much of that. I don't really get that game. I'm probably going to have to talk to you, Brian. <laughs> um, figure out how to play it. Because I, I, I've I played it like 10 minutes and I was just like, I don't know what I'm doing. And I don't feel like sitting and watching the video where you showed Papa Pete how to play. But I think just the fact that you have to tell people how to play. Maybe you should have had a better instruction manual <laughs> included. <laughs> but, you know... There are problems in the Intellivision homebrew community. There are problems with programmers. There are problems with publishers. There are problems with our mindset as consumers. Um, at the end of the day, what publishers and programmers are going to do is they're going to try to create stuff that people want. So when you've got people who just go and buy everything, even if it's garbage, um, that really reduces the incentive to make something better. Um, so honestly, just by default, I'm like, I'm not going to abstain in the vote. These are all good games. Um, but only one of them is a 2023 game and that would be Thunder Soldier. So I have to vote for my conscience and I'm voting Thunder Soldier from Homebrew Inc. for game of the year. But as I said, it would probably place seventh in last year's game of the year. Um, and that's, you know, that's why somebody like me would be a terrible, terrible person to actually host these awards. Because there was a couple, well, I didn't have to pinch my nose to, to make, to cast my votes in any of these categories, but I really have reservation on where we're going. Um, ports and hacks are great. There's huge demand for them. They don't belong on cartridges, and quite frankly, they don't belong in a lot of these categories, in my personal opinion. That is not to say, I know, I absolutely know, Papa Pete, with his presentation, puts a lot of work into this. The uh, committee that puts together all these nominations and decides what should be nominated puts a lot of work into this. 
the programs, even programmers, even if it's a game that I don't like, I respect the amount of work that programmers put in. I respect the amount of work that publishers put in. Um, there's time and money and effort put into all of this. That doesn't mean that I can't be critical of it. And I think more as a community, we have to, there's toxic negativity and there's toxic positivity. And if you just keep coming out about everything and saying it's great, um, if I'm driving around a car that has a flat tire, I want somebody to point it out. And that person probably cares about me. Um, not somebody that's going to be like, oh no, your car's fine, it's great, it's great. Because if I don't take care of that flat tire, flat tire is not a big deal. But if I don't take care of that flat tire, that's going to damage my rims. It's going to damage my axle. It's going to damage my suspension. It's going to snowball into something so much more um, at some point probably after Midwest Midwest Gaming Expo uh, I've got a really busy two weeks coming up um, I'm gonna do a video where we kinda do a deep dive into where the Intellivision homebrew community can do better um, and I hope you guys have watched my voting here and listened to my commentary with the mind that I love in television homebrew. My channel should be a shining example of that. In Homebrew is why I love the Intellivision. If it was just the original library, I'd like the Intellivision, but I love it because of the homebrew. And I think it's in everybody's best interest that we have a thriving uh, community and right now it's really stagnating. We have uh, games coming out where they'll sell 25 copies and they are far superior to garbage that's sold but it's like oh there's only this much um, and we need to fix that. <clears throat> As for uh, you're hoping to provide a good tire. I'm looking forward to it, Harvey. Let me know. I will. Uh, I will absolutely take a look at it when you when you come up with your good tire. Uh, Anders asks, "How are the sales stats for original games versus ports?" And I don't know specifically. Um, what I've been hearing from most publishers is that just in general, uh, sales are down. And I think that is primarily because we're watering things down. Not as much effort is being put in. There's always going to be those people that have to have one of everything. Um, honestly, I think those people are probably hurting, uh, hurting the community more than anything else because anybody can sell 30, 40, 50 copies of something. So if you make your business model of I'm gonna charge you a buttload of money but there's only 50 so get it now let's be completely honest you don't even have to put anything on the cart these collector guys are gonna be like I have to have it so I buy it um, and I was talking to one one such collector uh, a little while ago and I'm not gonna expose anybody here but uh, he said well you know if it's in television I want to support it and my counter argument is like, well, what if by supporting everything, you're actually hurting the community? You're actually, you know, supporting the people who are watering, you know, continuing to water down and take advantage of the fact that they know people like you are going to buy everything. Um, and, you know, it's, it's a tough Thing. I don't have the solution for it, but it's definitely a conversation that our community needs to have. Uh, Brian's Man Cave. Napoleonic Wars I would not consider a port because it's not a port of another video game. It is a uh, video version of Stratego. Much like best original game here. Oh, now it doesn't show me the games, but Mr. Chess was in there. Chess is not a new game. Chess has been around for thousands of years. Um, 
you know, Stratego, your Napoleonic Wars is not a, it's not a port by my definition of port. And again, it's something that we did a lot of additions to. Uh, well, you guys did a lot of additions to. I was that guy sitting back, like, wouldn't it be neat if we did this? <laughs> um, but I'll hang my head on that. It's like, hey, that was my idea. Somebody more talented than me did it, but that was my idea. Um, so yeah, some food for thought. I hope I haven't upset anybody. Um, keep in mind, all opinions are mine. I, I'm just a dude. I'm not anything special. But I appreciate you all joining me. I hope you enjoyed uh, this little look at the Intellivision Homebrew Awards. All of you who are Atari Age members, I hope you go in there and vote. Whether you vote the same way I did, whether you feel the same way I did, doesn't matter. Uh, make your voice heard. And uh, especially if you're the type of person to want to buy these games and uh, and that, you know, let your votes reflect on what you want to see. Um, like, for instance, best, uh, best graphics. I voted for an NES port. I, you know, despite my opinion on ports, um, it's just super impressive. And, hey, if you're going to do more games like Dragon Quest, I'm all for it. Like, that's really impressive on the Intellivision. But, uh, yes, Brian, uh, we will find out about Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition tonight, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern, roughly, I believe, on uh, Papa Pete's channel. He is going to be making the announcement as to whether or not they reached their 100 or not. I... I, I don't know how I feel about it. I don't like the sales model. I understand the sales model, um, but I don't like it. I don't think it's consumer friendly, uh, but it's a protection versus uh, against risk, especially in the community as it is right now. Um, so if it fails, like my, my worry is if it succeeds, yes, we get a complete inbox copy. Well, we have the option to make our copies complete in box of uh, Ghostbusters Ultimate Edition, which is vastly superior to the other Ghostbusters game. Um, actually, now that now that that's closed, and you know the programmer and publisher is anonymous and all that, but uh, I can reveal I'm I'm the voices in that. All twenty voices in there are me. Um, and it just goes to show anybody that wants help with any homebrew game, whether it be my opinion, whether it be, hey, can you record a voice for me? Or can you do this? Can you do that? I'm happy to help. And even if Inti Home contacted me, is like, hey, we're going to send you a ROM. Don't review it yet. It's just we want your opinion on it. I'm happy, happy to help them. Um, give my opinion on what I would change, how I would make it better. You know, what would get a good review out of me? Um, so that's, uh, that's my view on that. But so if that succeeds, are we going to start seeing more games sold like that? And I hope not. I, I wasn't a big fan of how it was sold, but like I said, I, it's a direct reflection of the current homebrew community. That game, you saw the... If you haven't seen the video on uh, Papa Pete of him just playing the gameplay, um, absolutely blows everything else out of the water. It's fantastically done. It looks great. I have played and I played the version of the ROM that only had the two voices in it. Um, plays great. That's the type of game that should sell a hundred copies, no problem. So. Um, I hope it did so that we get, get that aspect, but I also don't want to encourage many more publishers to try to go with this, uh, business model because I don't think, I don't think it's fair to the consumer. And if you miss it, you miss it. Uh, and I don't think in the long run, like it's fine for collectors, but if you're trying to get more people to have interest in television and interest in, in television homebrew, uh, that's not the way to sell things. That's going to push people away. So, 
Yeah, in a few weeks, I'll probably... I'll have to think whether or not maybe I try to do a, a stream and maybe talk with Brian and Papa Pete and Television Gamer. I know Papa Pete and the Television Gamer, uh, they're more, like I said, the community and the, the neutral view on things, so maybe not them, but maybe... Maybe I see if Carlos Madruga wants to talk. Um, or maybe I just sit and ramble. But uh, we'll see. I think I think there's a lot of things that need to be addressed in all, in all three stages of, of how things work. So, um, yeah, that was my Intellivision Homebrew Awards stream. I, I hope you liked it. Uh, this week I'm reviewing an NES game called Project Blue. It's going to be fantastic. The intro looks awesome. I got my son to be in it. Um, so stay tuned for that later this week, and we'll see you next time on Mike's Gaming Gala.